Okay, uh, so let's take another example of Lewis dot structures, um, COCO2. And we'll use this to introduce another topic because this is a harder example than the C3H4 that we just worked. Uh, so again, first thing we want to do is counter valence electrons. So carbon's in group four, so it has four valence electrons. Oxygen's in group six, so it has six valence electrons. And chlorine's in group seven, so it's got seven valence electrons. So four for carbon, six for oxygen. Chlorine's got seven, and there's two chlorines, so that's 14, 20, 24 electrons. So whatever structure we draw, better have 24 electrons in it. <clears throat> and so again, this one's a little bit harder because we don't have just one of one atom that we can put in the middle and attach everything else to it. Uh, so we just have to try stuff and see what we can make work. So let's, uh, let's just go carbon, oxygen, chlorine, chlorine. So we'll try that. We'll try several possibilities to illustrate the concept. Uh, let's try chlorine to oxygen, put a carbon on top. Oops. And then another chlorine. And then we'll try a third possibility. What else should we try? Let's try chlorine, carbon in the middle, oxygen on top, and another chlorine. Okay, so we'll try three structures <clears throat> just to illustrate the concept. <clears throat> okay, so what do we do now? Uh, so what we would do now is add enough lone pair electrons to give every carbon or every atom 80 electrons and octets. So satisfy the octet rule. So let's so this carbon, so we'll call this molecule A. Carbon needs three lone pairs, oxygen needs two lone pairs, chlorine, first chlorine needs two lone pairs, and the one at the end needs three lone pairs. Now each atom has 80 electrons around it. And so we'll call this molecule B. Let's do the same thing here. The two chlorines on the end both need three lone pairs. The oxygen in the middle needs two lone pairs. And the carbon on top needs three lone pairs. We'll call this molecule C. So each carb chlorine needs two lone three lone pairs. Oxygen on top needs three lone pairs. And carbon in the middle needs two lone pairs. <clears throat> okay. So what's the next thing that we do is count our electrons, right? So if we take molecule A, it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lone pairs. That equals 20 electrons. And it's got 1, 2, 3 bonds. So that equals 6 electrons. So we've got 26 electrons, which is too, too many. So what do we do if we have too, too many electrons? Then we need to erase two lone pairs, we need to erase four electrons, and we need to add another bond instead. So, uh, for molecule A, we have several options. We could erase four electrons across a CO bond and add a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Or we could add, re erase two electrons between the oxygen and chlorine, two lone pairs, and add another bond. So then we would have 24 electrons, or our third option would be we could erase four electrons between the two chlorines and add a chlorine-chlorine double bond. So any of them are possible. You can try them all. So I'm just going to pick one. I'm just going to go with the first one. With that one, it really doesn't matter because I know that one's not the right answer anyway because I've done this enough that I know that the structure is not going to end up being the best one. Uh, but I'll show you how you figure that out in a little bit. Okay, so let's just say the double bond is between carbon and oxygen. And then everything else will be the same. So two lone pairs on chlorine now. One lone pair on, or on carbon. One lone pair on oxygen. That chlorine still has two lone pairs and that one still has three. <clears throat> so now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lone pairs. So that's 16 electrons. One, two, three, four bonds. So that's 80 electrons, so that's 24 electrons. So that molecule has the right number of electrons. Carbon, oxygen, and both chlorines have 80 electrons, so that's a valid structure. May not be a good structure, but it's a valid structure. You haven't violated any rules. So if we so if we do the same thing for B and C, if you count their electrons, you will see that they both have 26 electrons as well. So we need to do the same thing to B and C that we did to A. We need to get rid of four electrons, two lone pairs, and add another bond. So for B, 
if we get rid of, let's just say these four, and add a double bond between carbon and oxygen. <clears throat> and then do the same thing for C. Let's say we get rid of these four electrons and add a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Okay, so now that has 24 electrons, that has 24 electrons, all atoms have an octet, so all atoms are good structures. So, how do we know which atom, which molecule is the best? Um, maybe one is better than the other. So to figure this out, what we have to do is calculate what's known as formal charge. And to do that, basically you have to take for each atom, So for each atom in the molecule. So the way to calculate formal charge is you take an atom's uh, valence electrons minus the dots on the atom, so minus the non-bonded electrons is what that means, and minus the lines on the atom, which is the bonds. How many bonds does it have? <clears throat> or the number of bonds, number of dots, number of lines. So if we take molecule A, for example, we call that B, we call that C. Let me just draw the molecule again right quick. Okay, so if we calculate formal charge on carbon, it's got four valence electrons minus four dots. That would be the four dots, and then minus two lines, two bonds, equals so four minus four minus two. So that carbon would have to have a negative two charge. <clears throat> and if we did the same thing for this oxygen, so six valence electrons minus two dots minus three lines, that carbon oxygen will have to be plus one charged. <clears throat> and for chlorine. It's got seven valence electrons, minus four dots, all right, four dots, and then minus two lines. So that chlorine would have to have a charge seven minus four minus two plus one. And then for this chlorine, seven valence minus six dots minus one line is zero, so that chlorine has zero charge. <coughs> okay, now let's do the same thing for B and C. Let me draw the structure again. So that's B and C. So we want to calculate formal charges on each of the atoms in the molecule. Okay, so for chlorine, seven valence, minus six dots, minus one line, zero. And so this chlorine on the right looks the same as the chlorine on the left. It has three lone pairs and one bond. So if the one on the left has a formal charge of zero, so does the one on the right. And for carbon up top, four valence, minus four dots, minus two lines would be a negative two charge. And the oxygen, six valence minus four lines minus zero dots, it had to be plus two charged. Okay, and then do the same thing for C. So oxygen, six valence minus four dots minus two lines, no charge. Chlorine, seven valence minus six dots minus one line, no charge. And so this chlorine also is zero, this chlorine is zero, this oxygen is zero. And carbon, so four valence minus zero dots minus four lines, no charge. No formal charge. So for C, all of the atoms in the molecule have no formal charge. Whereas for B, one atom's negative two, one atom's positive one. And for A, 
one atom's negative two, one atom's positive one, and another atom's positive one. So of the three molecules, which do you think is the best structure? If you guess C, you're right. So the molecule, so the basic rule is the molecule with the fewest uh, formal charges is generally the most stable. So you can synthesize molecule C. We have molecule C in my research lab. So a stable molecule. Uh, molecule B would be so unstable you can never make it. And molecule A is probably so unstable you could probably never make it as well. Generally molecules with a lot of formal charges are not necessarily very stable molecules. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's how if you have multiple structures to choose from, how you figure out which one is the best structure is to figure out formal charges and the one with the least amount of formal charges is going to be the best structure. So for this class, if you drew a molecule A, B, or C, if I ask you to draw a Lewis dot structure for ClCO2 and you came up with A, B, or C, I would probably accept it on a test uh, just because at least you came up with a structure that has the right number of electrons and you didn't violate the octet rule. Um, but I might give you molecules A, B, or C, for example, and ask you which is the best molecule in which case you would have to know that you have to assign four more charges to figure that out. Okay.